So as you can hear in the background, I have been uh, 3D printing some stuff here. And what I've been working on lately are uh, printing off uh, the face shields, you know, for this uh, the shortage and the epidemic and all that stuff coming up. And I've been, this one little um, 3D printer, the Ender 3 Pro, it's been going 24-7 uh, making these masks. And I have been doing it out of PLA, and I'll, I'll show you here in a second. Um, and it, they've been coming out great. Um, so I decided to try out PETG. I've never you know, printed with that before. So it was kind of interesting. I'll show you what I did to go through and what adjustments I made, some test runs, um, and what I ended up doing. So let me show you what I got. So this is what I've been printing. And this is just using regular PLA. You can see they've been coming out quite nice. Uh, this little Ender 3 does really well with it. It's not the fastest printer in the world. I haven't done any upgrades on it yet. But uh, but it does a good job. So, like I said, I decided to try some PETG, and let me show you what I uh, went through. So this is the first shot at using the PETG on the Ender 3 Pro, and you can see where it started to separate here. Uh, I really haven't taken a good look at this because when it first started, it looks like it was doing great and I just let it run overnight and that's what happened. Now it got quite of the way through it but you can see where it started to separate here and even down here on this level if you can see that and I can feel the it, like it shifted right so I'll take a look at it pretty close but the only thing I did different I'm used to using PLA and the only thing I did different, this was at 140, or excuse me, uh, 240, um, the temperature up to 240, and the bed up to 70. So with PLA, I'm used to using uh, 201 and the bed at 60, and it does great. So this is what we are printing. So we've been, you know, printing off these uh, face shields, and this is using PLA, and and it's been doing great. This Ender 3 Pro has been going 24/7 for quite a while, pumping these out, and you can see I I was running out of orange over there, so we switched over. And said, well, let's let's give it a shot. So on a closer look on this. You can see the ridge here where it came separated. So it must have just grabbed it and drug it off and maybe it's not not enough heat to get it to uh, to bond together like it should. And down here on the bottom you can see that little ridge that developed. Let me get a steady hand for you here. Can you see that? You can see a that like an indent on it, but uh, now there is some discoloration. You can see on the bottom here, but I took a second look and was like, you know what? I did have I was switching from orange to white, and you can see where it's you know I run this little line here to try to clear all the the orange out of it, and apparently. So it's just that very, very first layer. It just still had a little of the orange color to it from the previous filament. So I don't think this had anything to do with heat or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and up the temp and see how it comes out. All right, so it looks like this one, at least it finished printing. But let's look at the quality of it here. Um, yeah, you can see there's there's some stringing going on. 
So there's the model there. And there's the settings that I used. So the layer heights at 0 0.2. Um, all of that was basically the same that I've been using on PLA. Uh, same as the shell. That really hasn't changed. Um, wall line count 3. Uh, infill, I did go down to 25%. I usually go from 30 to 50% on PLA depending on what I'm printing. Uh, infill pattern, well I go between zigzag and uh, grid. But in this case it was zigzag. And this was the main thing. My first print where it just all separated, I had it 240. Now this is at 245 and the plate temperature at 70, the bed. Um, and the print speed defaults 50 and I upped it to 60. When I'm doing PLA, seems like I can go up to 70. Enable retraction, yeah, so everything's about the same. Uh, the main the main changes was the temperature and the infill. Um, well that's it so far. I might do another check. I need to print off another one anyway and I think I'm going to bump it up a couple of degrees but the main thing when I'm looking at it you see there's there's where it was bulging out and you see that little line right here where it's where it's bulging and then these two walls here and and here if you can see that um, yeah if you can get a good look there see the way it looks like it's it has a bow to it it looks you know concave or convex on this side whatever you want to look at so I'm not sure um, I'm thinking maybe that it is the uh, layer height maybe I need to up it a little bit is it is it is it squashing everything down as it's printing um, and causing it to bow like that let me know your thoughts on that But I think I will try make a couple of more changes here and do another test print. Well, there's round two, and uh, it looks almost identical. Yep, some stringing. Same spots, too, relatively. Just looks like it's missing or okay we'll try another one and I'll do some uh, more pronounced changes on it and see what happens so this round um, since the prints that are coming out uh, the PET PETG is still working, but there's still some stringing. They're still, uh, they're not perfect, but they are usable. And being that these are some face masks that I'm really trying to get out quick, I changed these settings uh, to try to speed up the print. And you can see I knocked it down from, what was it before, seven hours or so, down to um, just under three. And what I did so I went with the low quality I named it low quality PETG so the the layer height I changed from 0.2 to 0.28 uh, the line widths at 0.6 and then the corresponding wall line counts to uh, top layers 3 instead of 4 um, no infill 
the printing temperature um, since I'm speeding this up um, well print speed I went from 50 to 60 and I upped the temperature to 250 uh, previously I had you know what did I try uh, 245 247 and now up to 250 and the build plate temperature is still at 70 that seems to be working okay so there we go this one is for a low quality but very fast print and uh, and we'll see how that goes I'm anticipating some you know stringing and all that good stuff but uh, I'm anxious to see what what this does um, for a fast print okay so here's the third iteration this is the one I did for the quick print and you can see there yeah two hours and 43 minutes the previous ones were taking up to seven hours uh, so far it looks about the same let's pop that off still some stringing going on but not any worse but I think it's a little better see I don't have that little ridge jutting out here looks like it tried over here and even the the band here still looks a little concave but not bad I think it's because the top and bottom layer just seems to be wider but not bad yeah so it's holding up I think this is a good way um, so the PETG with uh, the higher heat um, and you saw the settings I did there no infill because there's just a few little spots where I had infill and since the PETG is stronger anyway it looks like it's holding up to all the bending that I'm subjecting it to so I think it's going to clean up nicely after you get rid of all the stringing um, all right, so I think that is it. Those are the adjustments that I made, trial and error. You can see the iterations here. Um, not too bad. But I was really surprised how going the, the low quality, high speed method, I think it actually did uh, just as well, if not better. You see on the inside, you can see the, the ridge there. Here it is not. On these two, it looks like on the exact same spot. There, here, really separated. And here, it looks like it tried, but not bad. Not as bad as the others. I don't know why it's doing that. But I think that is it. Um, so those are the adjustments I did on this Ender 3 Pro uh, to do the PETG and I actually cut the uh, print time in half if not a little more than half so I can double up on production on these things so well that's it in a nutshell uh, thanks for watching be sure to subscribe this is kind of a new channel for me and we'll be covering quite a bit so stay tuned.